Hello, my name is Usman Siddiqui and I'll be presenting my final project. The topic I selected was the Google Cloud Data Lab. The Google Cloud Data Lab is part of the Google Cloud Platform and it enables users to use this interactive tool and explore, analyze, and visualize data. It works in tandem with Google BigQuery Google Compute Engine, and Google Cloud Storage. We'll demo Google Cloud Data Lab working side by side with Google Cloud Storage to deliver a static website. The pros of Google Cloud Data Lab are its scalability. It allows users to manage data from a few megabytes to big data which can go into several gigabytes. It also allows large-scale data exploration, and it runs on Google App Engine, delivering multiple services automatically, which we'll see in today's demo, with the Google Cloud Data Lab working with Google Cloud Storage to deliver content through a static website. The Google Cloud Data Lab lacks in features such as SSL and HTTPS which doesn't allow us to deliver content that is sensitive or private and it's a newer version to cloud solutions than let's say Amazon Web Services which currently offers a larger portfolio and features that Google currently does not offer. As part of our demo, we'll be going through the following steps to publish our static website. First, we'll select and set up a project using Google Data Lab. We'll enable the Google Compute Engine API as part of the step. We'll then launch the Cloud Data Lab Deployer, start using the Data Lab Manage instances and notebooks, and we'll create a Jupyter notebook that will create a bucket to house our static website. We'll verify the domain for Google Cloud Storage, and in this demo, we're using Google domains. We'll then create a CNAME record, which will entail creating a managed zone for our domain, managing the synthetic records and custom resource records in Google domains, and then we'll move on to adding website content using the Google Cloud Platform Console, where we'll add an index.html page, hello world, to our website as the main page. And we'll also add an error page to handle any errors that come across. And then we'll update the web configuration of the bucket so that it automatically displays the index page and brings in the error page in case of any errors. We'll then move on to testing the website to make sure it works okay. And then at the very end, we'll stop our virtual machine and I'll discuss how we can delete the virtual machine and how that impacts any of our notebooks that we created during this step. So as a first step, we access the Google Data Lab by going to cloud.google.com slash data lab. If we have an existing Google account, we can use that, or we can create a new one to access the free trial. We'll select my console at the top right hand corner, which will then bring us to a page which will give us the option of starting our free trial. Google will request contact information and a credit card to get us set up for the free trial. Once we started the free trial, Google will take us to the developer's console where we can create a project. When we create a project, Google normally creates the first project automatically and calls it my first project. But we have the ability to name our project based on our requirements. We can also go into the advanced options and select the app engine location which is most appropriate for us. 
we enter a project name, create the project, and then we enable the Google Compute Engine API by going to the Compute Engine area of the developer's console, which will automatically enable the API for that project. We would then go to the Cloud Data Lab Deployer link and select Sign In to Start. Google will request us to sign in and provide permissions to continue. Once we accept the permissions, we can select our project from the drop-down list and select Deploy. The deployment usually takes between 10 to 15 minutes. There is a log that is created a few minutes into the process, which we can access to check the status of the deployment. Once it's successfully deployed, we'll be presented with two options. Start using Cloud Data Lab and Manage Data Lab application. We're going to start select Start Using Cloud Data Lab, which will bring us to the default notebooks maintained for all projects. In this example, I've created my own notebook called Usman Test Notebook. We can very easily create a notebook by selecting the plus sign and naming our notebook based on what we feel is appropriate. This will bring us and open up a blank notebook where we can enter in code. And for each line of code, we can run it and get the results right away to make sure it's working correctly. We first display the list of buckets that are currently available in our project with the command line storage list. We then perform a check for a new bucket with a unique name that will contain our index.html and error.html files. In this example, I'm checking for a bucket named My Web Pages and creating index and error.html and placing it in that bucket. The storage create command creates the new bucket for us. We can then go into the developer's console in the storage area and make sure that our bucket was created successfully, as we can see here. We then go back to our notebook, and with the storage write commands, we can create the files index.html and error.html with the content stored in variable text. Going back to the developer's console, we confirm that the two files were created successfully in that bucket. We then move on to Google Domain, which we've used in this example. But you can use any service to get your own domain. We first need to verify that the domain is in our control or we have ownership of that domain. We can do that at google.com slash webmaster slash verification and confirm that our Google ID owns the domain name. Once the domain has been verified, we can create a bucket from the developer's console or through the notebook like we just saw called www.smasiddiki.com, which is my domain name. The naming convention for this bucket is critical. It must be named the same as the domain name for the website. We then go into networking in our developer's console, and we create a managed zone for our domain and configure our DNS records to provide a CNAME alias to c.storage.googleapis.com. We go to networking, select cloud DNS, and then select create zone. We enter a name of our choice for the zone. For DNS name, we have to enter our DNS, which in this example is responsiviki.com. Once it's created, we can go into the zone and select Add Record Set. For DNS name, 
we enter www to ensure top level domain access. For resource record type, we select CNAME. And for the canonical name, we enter c.storage.googleapis.com. Select Create. And we're good to go. The NS and SOA records are created automatically and should remain unchanged. Going back to our Google domain under Configure DNS, we will first add a subdomain, usmansiddiqui.com, which will point to our main URL, www.usmansiddiqui.com. We will then maintain custom resource records similar to what we just did using the same CNAME type, adding the www to ensure top level access and IPv4 address of c.storage.googleapis.com. Going back to our bucket, we can upload an index.html and error.html file through the developer's console, or as mentioned before, we can use Jupyter Notebook to load content into each file. The important step here is after loading these files, we need to make sure that these are publicly available. This way, when we access these pages, or any user access the page, they don't get an unauthorized access error. Going back to the buckets overview screen, we select the icon on the far right of our bucket, and we select edit website configuration. This allows us to maintain a main page and a 404 not found page. This way, when a user tries to access our top-level domain, it defaults to index.html instead of trying to access the bucket, which is private. And if they try to access a page that doesn't exist, it would default our 404 not found page, in this case, the error.html. We're now ready to test our website. We access our website using www.smansiddiqui.com and we can see our hello world being defaulted which is our index.html web page. When we try to access a page that we know doesn't exist in our bucket, we get our standard error.html page. At this point we can go in to our developers console access the app engine, go into instances, and stop our instance from running. We can also go further and delete that instance if need be. Deleting an instance will not impact the notebooks that you have saved, and they will still be able to access any commands that were coded and executed. This presentation just went over how we can use a Google Data Lab and the cloud storage to create a static website using notebooks to create our buckets, as well as the developer's console to load our files. I hope you found this helpful. and are able to create your own website using these instructions. Thank you.